Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And last week, Nintendo finally gave us their big E3 show, and there was a ton that they announced. From Metroid Dread to Zelda Breath of the Wild, with little Super Monkey Ball and some other little doodads in between, they gave us a ton of new information and a ton of new game reveals. I wanted to go through all of the reveals that they gave us last week, and essentially give my review of the show in its entirety. With that being said, let's jump right into things. Now, there were a lot of expectations by Nintendo fans, Pokemon fans, Zelda fans going into this Direct. We expected some news on some upcoming games, and we also were hopeful that maybe we get some reveals for brand new things that we didn't already know about, because the lineup for the rest of 2021, while has a couple heavy hitters, really wasn't fleshed out until this Direct, and they definitely delivered. Now, we're going to start with some of the smaller stuff and work our way up. This isn't going to be in order, and I'm not going to cover every specific thing. I'm not going to talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy game coming to Nintendo Switch, which is a cloud game. We're not going to, we're not even going to touch that with an eight foot pole. We're just, we're just not. What we will start with, however, was the first thing they showed us, which was a new Smash Fighter reveal. Kazuya from Tekken is coming to Smash. It makes all the sense in the world. The developers behind Tekken have been helping develop Super Smash Brothers Ultimate along with Masahiro Sakurai and his team. We don't have a Tekken represent, we don't have a Tekken fighter in the game necessarily. We do have some Tekken representation, but it's not a fighter specifically. So getting an iconic fighter like Kazuya made all the sense in the world. For me personally, it doesn't do a ton. I'm not a Tekken fan. I've never played a Tekken game, but I understand that there were a lot of people who are big fans of the fighting genre who play a lot of Tekken who were very excited. It's just, it wasn't a fighter for me, but I'm glad it was announced. With that being said, we have one fighter left in the second fighters pass, so everybody's going to be watching to see what they eventually do with this one. And hopefully it's 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 maybe a Western IP, maybe it's Pokemon, something that would get me excited. I'm hopeful just as long as it's not another sword fighter. I think I think we'll be OK. I think they know that they have to go out with a bang, and I think it's going to be really exciting for that reason. Now, before we move on with the rest of the video, I just want to mention that the vast majority of you guys who watch these videos and hopefully are enjoying them are not subscribed. Of course, subscribing to the channel does a ton to support me and it does a ton to tell me what kind of videos you guys want to see in the future. But leaving a like is also great, leaving a comment. But if you guys have not hit that red button, please be sure to go down below this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss another upload, whether it's about Nintendo, Pokemon, or some other franchise or discussion topic that I want to talk about that week. It would be very much appreciated. Now, of course, following Smash and following a lot of other stuff, we have to talk about the biggest thing they announced at E3 this year, which was Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 are getting a remake on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> the first two Super Monkey Ball games, which I'm sure pretty much everyone who had a Nintendo system growing up in the early 2000s at least played Super Monkey Ball at least once. It's such a fun game. It's such a random game. And to see it come to Switch is really cool. And luckily to see them not bring some of the newer games to Switch is also nice because they really captured magic in a bottle with those first couple Super Monkey Ball games. And the ones that followed after them, they were okay. They weren't that good. We got them. They were they were video games. But luckily, they're they're bringing back two of the heavy hitters for the Super Monkey Ball franchise, which was really good to see. It's when Nintendo partners with other developers or they themselves decide to bring back a series that hasn't been talked about in a while. It's always really nice to see. It shows that they care about the franchises that is not that are not Mario and Zelda and Pokemon and some of the party games. With that being said, they did the same thing in this exact same trailer when they brought back Advance Wars. Advance Wars 1 and 2 are getting remade in 3D with this really cool 2D character art style. The games look absolutely gorgeous. Fire Emblem and Advance Wars are two of Nintendo's more tactical games. They were both very prominent and they had a lot of releases in the early 2000s. Uh, some of them uh, specifically talking about Fire Emblem didn't eventually come to the West until much later. So. We've had Fire Emblem and it's become a major Nintendo franchise recently, but Advance Wars was kind of in the dark and it wasn't really talked about. It never got new games, but now we're getting Advance Wars again. 
It's coming out this year, it's coming out in December, and it looks absolutely fantastic. I could not be more excited to play Advance Wars and to have it on Switch. This was just such a nice surprise. This is a franchise that when Nintendo fans would make wish lists for E3s or Nintendo Directs of things that they would love to see that we haven't seen, Advance Wars was always on those lists. It's such a niche franchise, granted, but it's something that has a lot of love in a lot of people's hearts. So to get Advance Wars, it's just really cool. After that, we got the announcement of the Fatal Frame Wii U game getting ported to Switch. That's cool. It's a horror game with a camera aesthetic. It, it looked really interesting, and it's something that a lot of people bought on Wii U when it first came out because it's a horror game on a Nintendo platform. That doesn't always happen. So it was really cool to see, and it's coming to Switch. So for people who are fans of horror games, I think this was really cool. It's not something I would get. I'm not a horror guy, whether it's horror movies or horror video games. It's not something I have interested in. Resident Evil is not a franchise that I have a ton of interest in as an example. But it's really cool that it's coming to Switch, and it's another Nintendo IP. I believe they publish Fatal Frame that's getting released on Switch that wasn't already there. After that, Super Mario Party came out a couple years back and it was lacking a lot of features. It was something that a lot of Nintendo fans were like, where's the multiplayer? Where's more maps? Where's more levels? It was a fun game. I got it at launch, but it was disappointing. But now we are getting Mario Party Superstars, which looks to be a major improvement on the Mario Party formula for Nintendo Switch. It's taking some of the original maps from the original Mario Party, bringing them to Switch, uh, bringing them up to, to uh, higher resolutions and better frames and, you know, all that good stuff that comes with new video games. But we're getting tons of mini games from all of Mario Party's history. On top of that, multiplayer is going to be in the game from day one, online multiplayer, which was not in Super Mario Party. It only came into Mario Party a couple months back. That was like a weird, random, all of a sudden update that we got, which is really great to see. And one of the biggest things that they showed us from this direct is you have the ability to save your progress in a Mario Party game during the game itself. This is this is massive. Really good stuff by Nintendo here. Next up, we have a game that got announced by Ubisoft and got leaked by Nintendo before their presentation, and that was Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, the sequel to Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which came out back in 2017 for the Switch. This game franchise does not have the best of luck. Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle got leaked early. Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope got leaked early. They can't win. It's really, it's really tragic because the original Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle was a ton of fun. It was such a strange combination of two franchises that I never would have thought would be combined together, Mario and Rabbids. And when you talk about the Rabbids, it's just, it's not, it's not usually good. The Rabbids are essentially the minions of gaming. They're not fun. They're not enjoyable. They're not entertaining, but they worked with Mario and with uh, Rosalina in this game. Hopefully it'll work as well as it worked with Peach in the first game. Uh, they're giving Rabbids some characters from the Mario universe to play. They're going into space. You've got Rabbid Lumas. It's all, it's all a lot. And it looks like the gameplay is gonna be changed slightly. It doesn't appear that it's grid-based like the original game was. It appears that it's more free movement in restricted areas, which can be really cool. And it's in space and it's got Mario Galaxy theming. So I mean, how can anyone really be that disappointed when you have anything from Nintendo that relates to Mario Galaxy, which is one of the best games of all time, if you ask me? Of course, there were the two heavy hitters in this Direct. Now, there were a couple good things that we've mentioned before. The Smash Fighter is big for certain people. Mario Rabbit, Sparks of Hope, Advanced Wars, a lot of cool stuff. But then they gave us these two little bits. The first of which came near the beginning of the end, near the middle of the Direct, I would say the beginning middle part of the Direct. And that was the announcement of Metroid 5, Metroid Dread. If you guys saw my reaction videos, you would know that we all lost our minds when we saw this. Not only are we getting the fifth game in the core 2D Metroid timeline, but they are giving it the name that was long rumored for a Metroid game for like the last 10 or 12 years being Dread. This has been a game that was in development hell multiple times, never saw the light of day. It was originally supposed to come out on the Nintendo DS back in 2006, 2007, and it just never did. But now we're seeing it and it looks glorious. Of course, Mercury Seam are the developers behind it. They were the ones who did Metroid Samus Returns a couple years back on the 3DS. It's just, it's such a great thing to see. It's so great to see Nintendo putting faith in this franchise, a franchise that keeps getting screwed over by Nintendo and resulting in poor sales, which results in Nintendo not doing anything for it. It feels like they're finally giving it the love that it needs with Prime 4 coming, who knows when, they let us know in the direct that they are still working on Prime 4, but Metroid Dread is coming. The gameplay looks great. It looks so, it just looks so good on the Switch. 
we're finally continuing Samus's story with the Metroids. The uh, main, the creator of Metroid, the main developer of Metroid, said in some interviews afterwards that this would be the end of this story arc for Samus. It's just, it's so good to see. The game comes out in October. I could not be more excited. The last thing we got in this direct, after giving us some Skyward Sword information and showing us off a new Game & Watch console themed after Zelda, which is, you know, all well and good, we finally got more gameplay footage for the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild's sequel game which does not have a title yet. And for some reason, they're being very secretive of it. And wow, it just, it looks like more Zelda, which I mean, is ev what everyone wanted. It's the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but basically turned up to 11. Not only do you have flying, floating islands that Link is going to go to, but there's these dark elements that we have not seen in Zelda games since Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess. It just looks so good. There's a story here that seems deeper and more in-depth than the story we got in Breath of the Wild. There's things having to do with the corpse of Ganon. There are these strange markings on Link's arms that we're not too sure about. In the trailer, we saw that he has some new abilities. Will they be used with the Sheikah Slate, or does it have something to do with the markings on his arms? We're not sure. Not only did the gameplay look really cool, and it looked like they were doing some really cool new things with the landscapes, but it seems like those floating islands actually got ripped right out of the ground, which might mean that it could expose some new underground elements. There's a ton here. We're going to do some Zelda videos as the year comes on. They told us at the end of the trailer that 2022 is the release date. I can't be more excited for this game. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. And I just hope, I pray that it gets released at the beginning of 2022, but I know deep down that it's going to get released in probably the fall or the Christmas season of 2022. So we're going to have to wait over a year, but it's fine. We saw more footage. I'm good. With that being said, that was Nintendo's E3 presentation. I would give it a solid A minus. It's an A. Don't get me wrong. It was a great, it was the best E3 presentation of any company who showed up this year. Granted, that bar was set very low and was set by Microsoft, which just tells you a lot but Nintendo hit it out of the park. They had a couple heavy hitters, Zelda and Metroid. That was it. No Pokemon, strangely. I did a video about that last week. Just the weirdness around what they're doing right now. And they brought a lot of their B titles. You know, that Super Monkey Ball, Advance Wars, Mario Party, Mario and Rabbids. These are all, these aren't the big, big Nintendo IPs. It wasn't like we got a brand new mainline Mario. It wasn't like we saw Metroid Prime 4. We didn't see, we didn't get a release date or a release month for Zelda. We only got a very short one minute trailer, but it was enough to really get us all excited. And that Metroid Dread announcement is huge. See Nintendo putting time and effort into a series that is more niche, but loved by Nintendo fans specifically is great to see. So I'd give it an A minus. With that being said, I would love to know what you guys thought of Nintendo's E3 presentation. Were you excited by what we saw? Were you disappointed by other things? Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below and leave a like on this video if you want to see me talk about more Nintendo content in the future. I've been Linky. We'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.